In 2018, I presented at ATTW about Autodesk's Project Dreamcatcher, an early example of AI-driven generative design software for 3D modeling. Today, generative design is just part of Autodesk's various CAD programs and is being used daily in many industries. It's also changing design workflows. I'm arguing that GPT-3, 4, 5, etc. will similarly affect how we conceptualize academic writing processes. With chat GPT-2 and now GPT-3, the infrastructure for generative writing is increasingly accessible to broader audiences. I think we're going to see a shift toward understanding academic writing processes as more like other forms of digital content production, rhetorical decision-making by human designers using semi-automated tools to produce modular drafts that can be extensively and algorithmically reworked as long as the base recording is reasonably good quality and captures design intent. What does my typical academic writing workflow look like? I start with notes on paper or an audio recording, then transcription slash drafting in plain text. I revise and edit in Word or Google Docs, and sometimes I do dedicated formatting in Word, InDesign, etc. For anyone working primarily in Markdown or LaTeX, the idea of rendering text in multiple forms is probably already a routine part of your academic writing workflow. To me though, even using these tools, writing still seems like a tediously manual process for creating digital text. For example, compare that process with my typical photography workflow. I might take some notes, capture a few hundred images in which I make decisions about composition, subject, focus, etc., and allow the camera to automatically adjust certain settings within defined constraints. And then I import the raw files into Capture One for processing and export. And at times, I might do some additional retouching or compositing in Photoshop depending on the situation. Compared to drafting an article, there are a lot more dials and slides along the way. I'm not doing that photographic editing work through command line or, you know, using chemicals and film, ink and paper, but there is still value in that analog process. I'm imagining future iterations of ChatGPT with a GUI similar to photo processing software. That is, the base image is already made, but I can make significant adjustments to a variety of settings. To get to that base image, I had to make choices as a photographer about subject, composition, exposure, etc. Sometimes it's important to manually dial in each setting. Other times that mental labor isn't critical and the camera does just fine deciding for me. But even with that relatively laborious part of the process finished, I still have options for making radically different final images from the same base file. Also, gasp, many photographers outsource their editing. When it comes to writing in chat GPT, we're still at the command line interface version with targeted content for top 10 chat GPT prompts to do X lists rampant on Twitter. So I wondered, what might a GUI for parametric writing look like? How would understanding writing as parametric change how we approach teaching and doing writing? When I say parametric, I'm drawing again from 3D modeling and design. In the simplest terms, parametric modeling lets designers change one dimension of a model and the rest of the design adjusts accordingly. In fact, such interfaces are already becoming available with tools such as Jasper AI's Boss Mode and Chibi AI. Although these particular tools are primarily intended for copywriting purposes, they illustrate a metaphor of writing process as content workflow. To be clear, these interfaces are still under active development, but they're illustrative. So what would I expect that interface to look like? Well, I would hope that it had sliders for tone, adjusting reading level or formality, adding noise to make it seem more human, adjusting citation styles automatically, summarizing and unpacking, or making modifications to scope all on sliding scales. In addition to these sliders, the GUI could make it easier to automate some of the more tedious revision and editing tasks, such as auto road mapping or signposting, auto stitching for rearranging paragraphs or sections, fitting to word count, showing a histogram of citation dates, or even gender bias in citations. Presets are also a common feature of photo editing software, so presets for common styles, genres, authors, and formats would make sense for exporting, and other generative features as well. And in my experience, these are reasonable tasks for ChatGPT to perform, it just takes a lot of typing.
Given these affordances, I would argue that teachers of first-year composition should continue assigning distribution plans and covering content strategy, think of revision as remediation, a la Bolter and Grusin, and remember, too, that at the end of the day, we're also teaching students how to teach themselves new technologies. We can also learn from web design pedagogy. Start the semester by hand coding an essay, but the whole semester doesn't need to rely on that particular skill set any more than it should for a class that already teaches across multiple media. Dreamweaver was a useful semi-automated tool for WYSIWYG encoding a decade ago. Yeah, that part. I TA'd a web design class in 2011. Looking at the web itself was the sample essay. If we suspected students copied from the internet, that required a manual review of code and checking the server logs. And after all of that, the university admins still didn't understand the evidence or how cheating worked in that context. So how did we address that? We asked students to explain how it works and why you did it that way live in front of the class. We incorporated peer-driven learning, usability evaluations, and client projects. All of these methods helped students think and act as techno-rhetoricians with meaningful audiences and outcomes for their choices. Hand coding is still a valuable skill to have, but not because there's a market for ye olde bespoke websites. Foundational knowledge of HTML, CSS, and scripting are useful when the infrastructure breaks down or doesn't quite do what we want, or when we need to push the limits of what's possible. That doesn't mean letting go of everything we know or teach about writing by hand. Rather, it means acknowledging that there are new tools that extend our capabilities as rhetors and change our workflows much the same way WYSIWYG editors and content management systems have in the past two decades. And just to emphasize this point, I'm breaking Pecha Kucha format. Wix still makes me cringe because of its bloated output and limitations, but it's no longer one of the only alternatives to coding from scratch. It was a WYSIWYG precursor to better tools and infrastructural improvements made over almost 20 years.